There are many, many, many English learners all over the world in different countries, and over one million of them are subscribed to this channel. <laughs> Obviously, I'm making this video because recently I've passed the one million subscriber mark uh, here on YouTube, which is pretty cool. And uh, I normally wouldn't do this type of video. It feels a little silly to talk about myself and uh, this channel and its accomplishments and things like that. But it's what people do, right? When people hit um, 100,000 subscribers or they hit a million subscribers or whatever, they usually do some type of video or they make some type of content uh, about that topic. So I decided to do the same thing. And I know that a lot of you want me to make some of these uh, videos, these English practice, uh, listening practice videos uh, about topics that aren't English related or language related. Um, so maybe I'll do that more. Uh, I'm not sure yet. That's kind of what I do for my normal listening time podcast. I'm sure most of you already listen to that. Uh, I talk about all different types of topics there and I give you the transcript. Um, so that's what I do on that podcast. Here so far with these long listening practice videos, I've kind of been talking about language related topics and I'm not sure if I'll continue to do that or talk about some other topics like hitting a million subscribers on YouTube or whatever. Um, but I guess just let me know what you think in the comments and We'll see. Uh, I thought it would be kind of interesting to talk about my journey from the first uh, YouTube video that I made uh, until now and talk a little bit about that to give you some listening practice. Uh, of course, I don't provide the transcript for these long YouTube videos, but you can click on the little subtitle button or the settings button and then activate the automated subtitles uh, put them in English, uh, or if you need them in your language, maybe you can find your language down there. But this should be good listening practice for you. So <clears throat> let me talk a little bit about my journey uh, on YouTube. You can learn a little bit about you know my past, and maybe some of you are interested in making a YouTube channel or something like that. Or maybe you're an English teacher and you found this video because you're looking at other online English teachers or whatever. So hopefully this motivates you. Um, so I started uh, this YouTube channel back in 2017, in October 2017, and it was not called Listening Time. <laughs> it was actually called uh, Connor Ingles, uh, if I wanna say it more with a Spanish pronunciation or it could be a Portuguese, uh, you know, pronunciation as well, depending on um, how you read it, because uh, I made videos in Spanish and in Portuguese, okay? Uh, it was a completely different channel from this one right now. <clears throat> I'm curious if any of you uh, have been watching this channel long enough to remember uh, when it was called Connor Ingles, or you remember any of my old videos before, I don't know, 2019 or something like that. I'm curious, let me know in the comments. Uh, it would be really cool if there's at least one person that remembers my channel from that long ago. Um, I made videos in Spanish and in Portuguese uh, teaching people English, okay? <clears throat> now, when I think about that, I don't like the idea at all and I'm glad I don't do that anymore, but I was just starting a channel and I uh, was an English teacher at the time and I saw that other people uh, kind of grew an audience in different countries, Brazil for example, by making videos in that country's language teaching English. So I thought that was the model for success and since I spoke Spanish uh, and I spoke Portuguese okay, not very well, but okay, I thought it would be good to make videos in Spanish and in Portuguese to 
build a huge audience uh, throughout Latin America and Spain, Portugal, or whatever uh, other countries speak those languages. And it was really hard. <laughs> it was hard to make uh, full-on grammar videos or whatever in those languages, teaching English. Um, it wasn't a good idea in uh, thinking about like the actual content. It might have been a good idea in terms of like gaining an audience. I didn't really gain many subscribers uh, and I didn't get that many views to be honest. <clears throat> but it was a good idea I think because I had seen it done by other people. So I know that it can work but I think I just don't have the personality for that. Uh, some of you might know of other English teachers who teach in Portuguese, in Spanish, in whatever language, and maybe they're just more captivating than I am, and um, maybe they don't look as awkward, you know, teaching in another language. I don't know. I don't think my videos uh, were that successful, if I remember, but it got me started making videos. I learned how to do it. I've never been good at making videos and uh, this whole the whole technical aspect even though I actually went to film school for six months <laughs> kind of ironic right uh, but I've always been terrible technically you can even see this video it's poorly lit bad lighting the sounds okay I think right but it's definitely not very visually pleasing but you know what I don't really care <laughs> because uh, my content is not for you know the aesthetics right the visuals this content is for listening <laughs> uh, so when I listen to content for my listening practice when I'm learning other languages as long as I can hear the person I don't care what the the video looks like if it's not well lit or whatever it doesn't make a big deal I'm not technical I don't have a team I should say that too uh, people assume I have a team of people that work for me. Sometimes they'll write me messages and they'll say, um, thank you to the whole team for this, or can someone from the team tell me that? <laughs> and I'm thinking, here's the team right here, right? Um, the boss and the salesman and the content creator. It's just one person. It's just me, okay? No one's working with me. So that's why um, not everything looks great. And I'm better at some things than I am at other things. Really, I think you probably just listen to me because of the content I create because of my voice, right? So thankfully, I don't have to worry too much about the technical stuff. By the way, I'm always, uh, you know, glancing down at my notes here uh, throughout these videos. So I've got some notes just so that I remember what I want to say. So um, I ended up switching those videos to English after a while. I really got tired of having to speak Spanish and Portuguese in all these videos and, uh, you know, preparing a lot to make sure I didn't mess up or whatever. So I ended up starting to teach in English. Um, this was better, of course, because I was giving people more input with those videos, they were hearing English, so much better for uh, my audience, right? And I even introduced some listening type videos. I remember I made like, I think these 10 minute videos where I would talk about something, at, I think at normal speed, I can't quite remember. And I even made some videos which I re-uploaded, I think last year, right? Where I went around to different places with my GoPro and I talked while filming, like in Peru, for example. <clears throat> so I made that type of content. And eventually I got the idea of wanting to make, uh, or sorry, wanting to um, start some type of language school. That used to be my dream for some reason, to start a language school. I think it's because I met my wife at a language school and uh, I liked that experience and I had fond memories of that. And I guess that kind of made me want to <laughs> start that type of business. But um, whatever the reason, I thought that I wanted to start a language school and 
also I was interested in foreign languages. So I wanted to make a school with more uh, languages than just English. And so I kind of um, started to think about that idea a little bit. And then I think I decided on just starting kind of an English program by myself and then with the idea of expanding that to other languages in the future. I think that's um, how it came about. So I started making content for uh, this English program that I wanted to create, and I named it Polyglossa. A lot of you have seen that name before on my uh, old videos or um, my uh, very first episodes of my podcast. That doesn't exist anymore, so don't think that that is still a project or a website that exists. No, that was the idea I had. Polyglossa uh, doesn't exactly mean this in Greek, but it's kind of like saying many and then language, like many languages, so to say, because I thought I wanted to create something and expand it to other languages, but that didn't work out. Bad idea. Uh, it was a terrible business model, terrible model for my seminars, which I started to make and uh, release on there. Some of you might remember those. It was just not a good idea. <laughs> so, um, but it helped me get started in the like entrepreneurial sphere, so to say. So I guess it wasn't a complete mistake. But um, for that, I was creating uh, seminars. And then before that, I think, is when I still had the idea of um, making like more of a program not just those seminars or whatever, but more of a full-on English program, like a course. And I made a lot of grammar content for that. I remember going to coffee shops and writing all these different um, exercises and things like that for different grammar topics. And I can't believe I did that now. And I still have those on my computer, actually. <laughs> but um, I did all that. Uh, I thought that I would make content for grammar. And I did some other stuff, some other types of uh, planning, and I was just really thinking through the idea. And around that time is when I really uh, started developing my own philosophy, really, in terms of uh, language learning, based on my own experience and based on <clears throat> just like my exposure to um, Stephen Krashen, the famous linguist, and his ideas about language acquisition and input uh, in specific. And it really resonated with me when I started reading uh, his material and I could kind of identify um, those principles that he talks about in my own language learning. And I started to understand the importance of input, meaning uh, content for listening and reading and just how um, fundamental and important it is and how like this is the foundation of your learning. And so I also really wanted to uh, create a lot of uh, like good input for that English program that I wanted to create. So I started making these listening practice videos. A lot of you know what I'm talking about now. I made these a1, A2, B1. I think I even made some B2 videos, which is ridiculous because you might know now that for me, I believe that if you're looking for a B2 level type content, you should just be, you know, watching native content or listening to native content. Okay. And, you know, B2 is like fluent. So you should be using native content at that point. Um, but uh, at that time, I still made B2 uh, videos. Um, but yeah, I started making these videos because I wanted to use them in my English program, right? Uh, so I made some, I filmed some, and I put them on YouTube. Uh, I think that was the very end of 2019 or so, uh, the beginning of 2020 as well. And I really just wanted to upload those to YouTube just to have them there, but I was thinking that I was going to use them as part of my program, right? And I noticed after some months 
that those videos were gaining traction. Uh, they were gaining momentum and still getting views months later. And I was a little surprised about that. And I was pleasantly surprised. And I thought, oh, this is interesting. Uh, maybe this is what people want. Uh, it's what I want. I really believed in the idea of uh, comprehensible input, you know, watching or and listening and reading stuff that uh, you can understand, but it's a little challenging and you're focusing on just understanding it and, um, you know, reading or listening or whatever. Uh, you're focusing on the content too, uh, what's being said. But really what I'm saying is you're focusing on input, right? Uh, that got me thinking like, okay, these videos seem to be pretty popular, way more popular than any other video I'd ever created up until that point. And I had made a good number of videos up until then. I don't know how many, but I had made many videos about, you know, grammar and vocabulary and pronunciation, all different kinds of videos in Spanish and Portuguese and English. <clears throat> and it was these uh, listening practice videos, specifically like the A1 listening practice videos and maybe a couple of the A2 ones that got popular. And I saw that they were just growing and consistently getting views uh, and they weren't going to stop. They were just going to keep getting more and more views. And it made me just think, oh, wow, maybe this is the content I should be making. Like this is the content I like. I like listening content. I like focusing my uh, language learning on listening. So I should just do this for the people watching my YouTube channel and see what happens. So I continued making those videos and I made other videos as well, uh, vocabulary videos, pronunciation videos, I think. But I focused mostly on those listening videos uh, while I was also doing the seminars for my old, you know, failed website or whatever. And then uh, eventually, um, I got the idea to do a podcast uh, that was less structured, not like, okay, here's a, a four minute video for the A2 level, right? Just a podcast where I'm talking slowly, clearly, I provide the transcript, but there's no script, right? I'm just improvising, talking about different topics. And that was one of the greatest decisions I've ever ever made <laughs> in terms of my career. I'm not going to uh, compare that to more important decisions I've made in my life, but it was a very, very important career decision for me because uh, that podcast became very successful in a pretty short amount of time. People uh, really liked it. I'm sure many of you like it, and uh, it became really one of the premier listening practice uh, type podcasts for English, right? So that became like my career <laughs> pretty much. Um, so that podcast really grew and it had a lot of success, whereas my YouTube channel, not so much, right? It was growing, but it wasn't that, you know, I wasn't really seeing a whole lot of results from it. But those listening practice videos that I had made continued to get more views, right? So in 2022, I stopped making YouTube videos and I just focused on my podcast, my membership, uh, my teaching. And, um, you know, I, I just didn't want to do YouTube anymore. And I came back more than a year later in 2023 towards the second half. Um, so like a year ago, right? And I saw that my channel had grown a lot. <laughs> it had um, gained a lot of subscribers, a lot of views. And uh, those listening videos continued to reach a lot of people, even when I just quit YouTube, right? And I had the idea to start uh, re-uploading my podcast episodes uh, onto YouTube uh, and just put the, the lyrics on the screen. I've been doing that even up until now, um, and I'm, I'll probably continue doing that, or maybe I won't, I don't know, but uh, I've been doing that up until now, and uh, just to kind of 
reactivate the channel a little bit. I made a few listening practice videos like I used to make, but I really didn't like them. And um, not that I didn't like the content, but I didn't like making them. It's just harder. It's more effort because I have to write the script. And it's just more work because it's through YouTube. YouTube is a lot harder for me than my podcast, right? So I just didn't like it as much and I stopped with that. But um, I thought it would be cool to make these long YouTube videos that are kind of like podcast episodes, but in video format and probably a little bit harder than my podcast because I think I talk a little faster here than I do in my podcast. And uh, so, it makes it harder. I'm not defining all the new words that I use. So it, I, it was something that sounded easy enough for me to do. Uh, not a lot of technical work, but something that would be beneficial to people. And I wanted to give YouTube its own content because these videos are not available for just the podcast listeners. This is separate. Um, so I kind of wanted to breathe life into my YouTube channel <laughs> and to help it to grow a little more and to make it a little bit independent of my podcast because really I was just re-uploading my podcast episodes to YouTube and that uh, was good, but it's really just my podcast, right? But these videos are specifically just for YouTube. So uh, I've gotten a lot of good feedback on these videos. People tend to really like them. And these videos have given this channel a boost for sure. Um, it's uh, th They've helped the channel uh, get more views, more subscribers. And here I am today. Uh, it's October uh, in the year 2024. And the channel has more than a million subscribers. So um, pretty cool. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for helping me reach this milestone. Um, <clears throat> you might think that I don't seem very excited. Uh, I'm not really making a huge deal out of this. I didn't even really talk that much about YouTube in, in specific. I just kind of talked about my whole journey. And I think that's because um, I, I'm really thankful. Uh, I thank God that I have a million subscribers on YouTube. But uh, you probably know by now that uh, I don't really take all of this so seriously in the sense that uh, it's not my goal to reach a certain number of subscribers or views or I don't really have a YouTube personality um, and to be honest YouTube has kind of um, been in the background for me for a while the podcast has really been the main thing in the last few years um, it's kind of a surprise now that I'm back on YouTube. I didn't think that I would continue on YouTube after 2022. Um, so, uh, you might ask like, how do I feel that now I have a million subscribers? To be honest, uh, I don't really feel any different. Uh, I know that, uh, for some of you that might sound like I'm not grateful. I am, of course, <laughs> I'm grateful. I think that, uh, the vast majority of you probably don't know much about like YouTube and how the analytics work and uh, maybe how, like what these different numbers mean. Uh, to be honest, nowadays, subscriber count doesn't really matter at all. It doesn't really reflect much um, because uh, just because you have more subscribers doesn't mean you get more views, okay? So um, it, you would think logically like okay when i have 900,000 subscribers i'm going to get a lot more views than when i have 500,000 subscribers because that's 400,000 more people that are uh, going to get the notifications of my video it doesn't work like that <laughs> unfortunately so um i'm not getting way more views now than i was when i had 600,000 subscribers for example i probably have more views i don't know i haven't really looked at the analytics but it's not that big of a difference, right? So the subscriber count itself doesn't really matter. It's cool to say, oh, a million subscribers, but really it's more just for your ego, right? So to be honest, it doesn't really mean that much for me. I, I don't have a, 
that gold play button behind me. <laughs> Maybe I'll I'll uh, request it because now I can request it since I have uh, a million subscribers. But I might not do that. But if I do, you're not going to see it behind me probably, unless I'm just joking or whatever. <laughs> so I'm not that type of person that is like a big YouTube personality. Um, and you know, me in general, I'm, I'm okay. I have a million subscribers on YouTube. That's cool. I'm thankful. This helps me. It helps my business. Um, I'm glad that I'm reaching all these people. I guess that's what I want to say is like the coolest part about the million subscribers. It's not because I reached a million. It's because, um, you know, this content has helped all these people. That's the cool part, right? So I don't really feel, um, you know, super special, like some big shot, you know, celebrity, of course not, right? Uh, the vast, vast, vast majority of people have no idea who I am and they'll never know who I am, right? But it's pretty cool that uh, at least a million people have found this content useful enough to press subscribe, right? That probably means that they benefited from that content. So that's cool because I'm a language learner and I know that uh, when you find content that is just interesting for you, you like it, it's good for your listening, it's really satisfying. When I find French YouTubers uh, where I go, oh yes, I like this type of video, I'm gonna watch all these videos and, and practice my listening with these videos, I love that feeling. So hopefully some of you have gotten that from my videos or my podcast. That's the cool thing about the one million. It doesn't mean much to me in terms of my ego, one million, whatever. But um, the fact that that many people have found content that has probably helped them with their listening practice, that means a lot to me because that's what I look for as a language learner. And I really appreciate good content that is just great practice for my listening. It's a lot harder to find that in other languages. I don't want to say it's hard to find. It's easy to find, but you have to do more searching to find like the right uh, content that's like perfect for you. Um, English has a lot more of that, fortunately, for you guys. But I think that it can still kind of be a challenge to find like the perfect channel where you can just go video after video after video and watch them all and enjoy them and practice your listening. I hope that this channel has been like that for you. I hope that my podcast has been like that for you. That's really the biggest thing that uh, I take away from the million subscribers is that cool. I think a lot of people have probably found content that has been helpful for them for their listening, right? That's what I'm happy about. <laughs> and me, you know, I'm, I'm not a celebrity or anything like that. Uh, I think years ago, 1 million subscribers on YouTube, uh, kind of sounded like really glamorous. Um, maybe not as much nowadays. I don't know, but it's funny because you know, I live in the U.S. and I have very, very few people that listen and to me and watch me here, relatively speaking, right? Most of the people that listen to me and watch me are in other countries. So here, uh, I'll probably go my whole life and no one will ever recognize me here in the U.S. <laughs> I have been recognized a handful of times in Mexico, maybe four times, something like that, that I can remember. Um, but... Uh, that's not really what I want. I hope that if somehow this channel reaches 10 million, 20 million, whatever subscribers in the future, um, I still hope that uh, I don't get recognized that much when I'm traveling or whatever. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a pretty private person, so that's not really what I look for. It's funny because my family, my own family, even my wife, she does. She's like never listened to my podcast. I think once, like just because she like I made her do it or whatever the reason. Uh, she is just like not interested at all in my content and hearing what I'm I'm producing. My family, my my uh, extended family, they don't really know anything about my content. Uh, it was funny because we were traveling, uh, my family and uh, my sister's family. And they were uh, talking about my podcast to this person uh, at this museum that we were at. And they wanted to uh, tell him about it and recommend it, or they wanted um, to, to share it with him. And they didn't even know what it was called. They had to like ask me like, hey, uh, Connor, um, we're talking to this guy about your podcast. 
like how can he find it like they have no idea anything about that so <laughs> it's it's kind of funny like um i'm a pretty private person in terms of like what i do here i don't go around saying that i have a podcast or a youtube channel it, it's just not something i share that often and so you can tell that i'm kind of a private person i don't really um want a bunch of people to like think of me as oh this guy who's got this big um audience online because he uh makes english content i'm not that type of person but having said all that i'm making this video announcing 1 million subscribers so <laughs> it's at least um uh, significant enough that i wanted to make a video about it um but yeah Thank you all so much for listening, for watching. I should say watching. I always say listening because I'm more of a podcast person than a YouTube person, but you're watching me here. So thank you for watching. Um, I hope that this content really has been uh, just a big help for you, for your listening practice. Like I said, one of my big takeaways or the biggest takeaway really of uh, the million subscribers is that um, I know that a lot of people have probably found this content, the YouTube channel and the podcast, and uh, the, this content has hopefully become like their main source that has helped them reach a higher level in terms of their comprehension. Um, that's awesome. I'm super happy about that. Um, so this video was kind of different from my other ones. Hopefully you liked it. I didn't talk about languages really uh, but hopefully it was good practice for your listening let me know if you like this type of content uh, and uh, of course always remember that you can access my advanced podcast episodes with the transcript for each episode by becoming a listening time family member the link is down below and you can uh, listen to my u.s conversations podcast in which i talk to other people other native speakers we talk at normal speed and i give you the transcript uh, for those episodes as well. That link is also down below. All right. Thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you for helping me reach a million subscribers and I'll talk to you in the next one.